I am picking up my daughter from an extended weekend. So when she gets in, I'm going to mute and, and love on her a little bit. Okay. Okay. Hi. Hi, Georgia. Hi. Sorry, I was a little bit late. Oh. Oh, no, I think you're just exactly on time. Good, good. All right. Um, so maybe we'll wait like one or two more minutes. See if any so that's we had about seven RSVPs. Okay. Um, and because I'm at home and every time somebody walks past the door, the dogs get barky. So I'm going, and I think that my role here is more listening than anything else. So I'm going to mute. Okay. Sounds good. Speaking of dogs, I'm going to put my dog outside. I can hear him barking. I guess that the, uh, the thing that comes to mind is that I can't put my dogs outside. I mean, I could, but I think that it's, they just kind of own the place, so. Okay, we'll just go ahead and start since, oops, we are um, recording. So anybody who misses the first bit can just watch the recording. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, one new thing, if you've been on before, I did reduce the amount of slides in our slideshow um, by quite a bit um, for a shorter version. So that's the one we're going to go over tonight because I've been noticing that we're getting only about five to ten minutes on um, these agendas for different legislative districts. So um, we do have two versions up on the website still. We have a long version, so if they give us you know, 20 to 30 minutes, we can do the long version. Otherwise, there's a nice short and sweet version to do. And I'm just going to go ahead, do a little screen share to show you all where to find that. Okay, are you seeing the whole Washington website on your screen? Yes. Okay, awesome. Yes. Well, cool. All right, so as you can see, if you scroll down a little bit, there's um, the slideshow, the first one, that's a longer version. I think it's got about 15 or more slides. The slideshow shorter version is the one I worked on today, um, just because, like I said, we have some LDs coming up that only um, are giving us 10 minutes on their agenda. So I really cut it down just to mainly not lose people's interest as well before we get to the part that's really important, which is volunteering and donations and endorsement. So um, again, that is on the whole Washington website. You can go to literature and resources. And then about halfway down, you can get to the slideshows. Does anybody have any questions so far? Pretty straightforward? Straightforward. All right, so you should be able to access this from any place you go. That's the benefit of having it on the website. You don't have to worry about emailing it in advance or anything like that. Um, once you get to this page, you just go, um, Present right here. And then it starts up the slideshow. Easy peasy. Oh, we can present it. We can present it straight from the website. Yep. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So um yeah, that you know if if you go to a place that doesn't have internet, which I, I can't really imagine most places do, um, most LDs do have internet at their meetings. Um, you can also download it um, in advance. Um, how did I do that? 
that file download and you can download it as a PowerPoint and then save it to your computer. Um, but like I said, I very much doubt that you're gonna, anybody's gonna go to any meeting where they don't have access to the internet. Okay, so um, the first slide is just what the presentation is about, then who we are, um, I'm not going to go through in detail all of these slides since many of you have been on these calls before and also they're pretty straightforward. Um, Sean and I have been working hard at simplifying this slideshow so that um, really we get to the most important things about um, Washington and our path forward. Um, the benefits, probably one of the most important things to talk about. Um, right away, we'll talk about the benefits. And we talk about a little bit about how we're going to pay for it, since that's the number one question most people have um, during these meetings. Just before they even get to asking the question, we're just going to address that, that right away, um, how we're going to pay for it. And then, of course, we talk about the savings estimator, which is one of, I think, our best tools on our website so that people can plug in their numbers and see how much they're going to save uh, individually. Uh, we talk a little bit in the slideshow about Senate Bill 5222, just very, very, there's a little tiny bit about it because really our main goal is to get people to volunteer to collect signatures. Um, so, <clears throat> well, I do think that it's cool that we have a Senate bill. <laughs> I don't have very much confidence that um, single payer will ever pass, especially with the current um, elected officials we have who are residing over the health care committees. Um, so, as you can see at the bottom of this slide, it says if they don't pass it, we will. Um, I, we talk a little bit about the ballot measure, what that entails. And then the plan forward for whole Washington. It's the deadlines, the dates, the important dates. Um, this is a good spot to kind of tell people if they're busy right now with different campaigns, because everybody's busy in the primary and then the general election coming up, people are gonna be very busy and they're gonna say, oh, I, I'm overextended as it is. You can let them know that we're not gonna be doing this until next year. So please volunteer. You're busy now there's time it's not right away and then this is the most important slide um i think stay here the longest talk about how fun it is to do signature gathering how easy it is to gather signatures for universal health care it is definitely the easiest thing that i've ever ever gathered signatures for um and just you know maybe if you can have a little personal story about if you gather signatures for us the last campaign. And um, like I always like to tell people, I would just take my petition board with me wherever I went. I'd sit down at a restaurant and put it in the window and I'd have people come in from off the streets to sign my petition. That's how easy it was to get signatures for this particular That's cool. initiative. Um, and then if you're at a legislative district meeting, a lot of the times, but the legislators will actually be at the meeting listening to your presentation. So that is also a good time to, you know, say, hey, I see Senator Frock is here. Senator Frock, do you support SB 5222? And just put them right on the spot, you know, because they're in front of the people who are volunteering for their campaigns. So. It's really, that's a really good moment to, to address this issue with, with the um, representatives and senators from each of these LDs. And then this last one, just put everybody in the crowd on the spot now and say, raise your hand to volunteer or to donate. Um, and then we'll, once you get a, uh, an opportunity to go to one of these organizations, I will send you a packet that will have um, a volunteer signature sheet with a 
column where people can pledge a certain amount of signatures, payment envelopes where people can donate, bumper stickers and other giveaways like buttons, and of course, literature. So um, this will be the part where it's really awkward. I know it takes some getting used to that whole like asking people to volunteer or asking people to donate, but we really need to get above 250,000 pledge signatures um, very soon here so that we know we will make the ballot. How soon, uh, Georgia? I would, I would prefer to have those by the end of November. But we have until March before our signature gathering campaign starts. But it would make me feel a lot more confident in printing a whole bunch of petitions because it, it is quite um, pricey to print all those petitions. And um, I, it, it would be great if we, by November, had 200 to 250,000 pledge signatures. Have we gained um, more signatures um, since the last time we've met? Like, yeah. that changed since from 129,000? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have. I, I submitted a whole bunch of stuff to our data entry person to, um, put those, to put those in our database. I just have not gotten around to uploading all the um, different signature pledges from around the state. Um, so I need to do that. That's on my to-do list. Mm -hmm. I just forwarded the cam the, the photos that were taken from a few different events up north. And um, I did not add together how much the, the total signature pledges were. And I also haven't looked at how many people have just pledged on our website in the last like three weeks. So. I'm a little behind. Okay. <laughs> no worries. I think you're on vacation, taking a break. It's okay. Yeah, and I, and I feel very renewed, so it was, it was well worth it. Now, but are you tan? Mm. I'm very tan. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah, I spent a lot of days in the sun. It was great. Good. I know I went through that very quickly. Um, so if anybody has any questions, um, again, I just want to reiterate the purpose of going to these legislative districts to get um, donations, um, get endorsements if possible, and but mainly to get volunteers to pledge to collect signatures for us. That's the number one purpose of going to these different organizations. Any questions? No, it seems pretty straight up to me. I mean, um, it's I you know I've got my my checklist that I'm getting together of things to do before I get my face up in front of the forty sixth, but it seems pretty straightforward. And I um, I think I'm um, going to do a couple of run throughs kind of in private here at home just to make sure that I've got it down. Uh, I don't think I've got any bumper stickers or I don't I, and I don't pretty sure I don't have any current literature. I think I've got a couple of volunteer sign up sheets. But yeah, asking for a show of hands of, of you know, are you willing to gather signatures in your neighborhood kind of thing. I'll be speaking primarily to PCOs. So they're going to be walking neighborhoods and they should know their neighbors by now anyway. So yeah, um, make a note that I need to send you. Um, you said bumper stickers and sign and, and current and current literature, preferably with the uh, union bug on it. I mean, I can print stuff off at home, but without the union, I know that there's big union members in the district, so I need to make sure that I'm not, you know, handing out literature that doesn't have that. And I've probably got a couple of volunteer sign-up sheets uh, already, but if you're putting packages together, you know, might as well put a, stuff a couple of those in there too. So yeah, it sounds like getting the pledges is the big deal. That's mm -hmm. the main goal. And I think that they have allotted 20 minutes for me there. 
I'd have to look it up. I know that it was on the original invite and just make sure that they've got computer connectivity there. I'm not sure, but I think that the 46th does, I I'm, can't remember whether or not they've got it. I know that they've got a big screen for showing PowerPoints, but I don't know if it's connected. So I'll have to verify on that too. Okay, great. Well, yeah. I think and, I um, connected you with the chair already, so mm -hmm. you have her email, right? I have her email. Quite frankly, since I'm in the 46 and I'm a PCO, she's got my email too. I don't, I don't think that there's, you know, I don't lack for connections in the 46th. It should be a pretty good district. And I don't know, you might want to mention if you did, when you ask that um, question about the internet, you might want to say, hey, is there any chance that we could get an endorsement as well? Like, oh, we good point. Good point. Do we have That's a good idea. Um, a resolution for them to endorse? Yeah, um, I, you know what? I wonder if that's on the website too. If it's we not the website, that we want to put it up on the website. Mm -hmm. So, so a, 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 a sample um, format for a resolution oh. to endorse? Yeah, it's right under a slideshow, sort of. Right. Okay. So let me just I'll find it. Do a share. So, yeah, it's right here. Resolution. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's the one that they just passed, I think, in the 30th LD. So. Okay, Courtney and Blaine, do you have any questions or the shortest thing ever? <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind uh, attending one of these to to watch somebody else pitch once before. Sure, I'm doing it. Vicky, her yeah, she's doing one on August twenty first, um, at the forty sixth. So that's kind of up in your area, I think. Um, Vicky, do you, do you know off the top of your head what what location? Uh, they've been using the Mennonite Church at 125th and Lake City Way. I think that they've moved it slightly, but not all that far. I, um, I'm. I think it's I, at the I noticed that it was a slightly Lake different Lake address, but it's on Lake City Way. And then where is that? Which which city? It's on Lake City Way. It's at the Elliott Bay Brewing Company. Oh. Oh. Okay. So that's on. Is that on Lake City Way too? It is. All righty. So, brews. brews. If anyone wants to come and help me, you know, I yeah. imagine you'll be able to get a brew if you want it. <laughs> Celebrating. Yeah. yeah. What time is it? What time is that going to be at? I 630. believe. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Well, I think that the meetings the meetings typically start at seven. That's that's correct. That's correct. Right. <laughs> So yeah, Great. I think the closest one to you coming up, we have one tomorrow night, but it's way far south, so. Okay. No, that 21st should work. All righty. Great. Well, um, there's one tomorrow at like DSA Seattle. Is that still open? Yeah, I just asked, um, so one of our board members who's DSA has been um, connecting with all the DSAs across the state and that one was unconfirmed so i just asked her to confirm whether or not we are actually on the agenda and if we are then i might go cover that one or Catherine goes to the one that's further south or i might see if cindy who just joined us might be able to do it or someone else um because you know i'm kind of in this odd spot where everything is hard to get to. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, but 99 is a dream from between, you know, Boeing Field and your house. It's yeah. almost has no traffic. Yes. If, if it's within five miles, it's all right. Otherwise, it'll take an hour. Uh, yeah, I'm I, more I, than happy to do the 34th <laughs> District Democrats. I would be <laughs> the 30th was pretty easy for me to get to. 
but everything else is like fallacious. I know. Do we have more events coming up that are in your email? I know it's like your first day back. Um, more like whole Washington events or more? Yeah, like more LDs that were that have responded. Um, no, I haven't gotten any emails recently, so I need to follow up with a bunch of them. Um, I do have like a Facebook post that I made and a whole bunch of people responded on that and some of them I haven't followed up with yet. So, um, working on it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's hard, it's hard to get nailed, nail these events down. <laughs> but yeah, if we could get them all, pretty much all the LBs by November, that would be awesome. That's that's my personal goal was to make sure that we hit all the LDs by November. Okay. But the the problem is too, like I was saying earlier with the primary and then the general election, is they're really busy with endorsements. So November and December, they're going to be looking for things to do, things to put on their agenda. Right. Okay, well, um, I will put this recording up tomorrow. Um, sorry, Cindy, that you just logged in. We had a, the shortest meeting ever, and <laughs> we could always oh, wow. we could always extend it with a strategy meeting on the events to get more volunteers. Okay, I'm down. Yeah, so um, we don't have a lot of speaking events coming up and at best if we get 10 uh, volunteers from each of these groups uh, that's like 70 volunteers and that's like hopefully they pledge like a hundred so that's only like 700 signatures and maybe we get some do-gooders and get a thousand from here or there but um, it's not enough to like, like get us over that, that edge and so maybe we should start engaging uh, with our other volunteers in the other group on like doing kind of canvassing like we go down to Pike Place and talk to people and try to get volunteers that way to also give them like pitch it as an experience to the actual thing and that it's pretty easy to do because some, some people are really scared to go collect signatures and if there was like a setting where there's like no no real pressure I think that would be fun and then we could go enjoy the sun or Get some brewskis, and it's on. It's on Vicky. She's uh buying all the brew, brews. Hold up there. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Um, yeah, like Pride's Place or any sort of event coming up that might be like full of people who are progressives. Um, I know probably presidential campaigns are going to be visiting the state pretty soon so that also is a good mm -hmm. to maybe set up a table because those are people who are already interested in politics too um, i was thinking of maybe something like um the farmers markets which are kind of in full swing right now and if we took our, our boards and we maybe put on the back it's like we need your help to get universal health care and you know looking for volunteers to help something like that on the back so you could hold them up like we had last year you know, that's a lot of farmer's market, people that shop at farmer's markets, my impression is, is a lot of times they're more, um, maybe not more progressive, but they're more involved with the community that they're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is Blaine. I, I had a quick question uh, about the, uh, the LDs that you're targeting. Has anybody reached out to the 41st or 48th yet? So just, I've, I've emailed them all. Okay. <laughs> not all of them have gotten back to me. It looks like the 41st has not gotten back to me, but you said the 40, what was the other one? Eight. 40, 48. 48 has not gotten back to me. Um, so after the primary on Tuesday, Randy Grine, who was running for city council out there, um, is, he's chair of the rules committee for one of those districts. And he has, uh, he's agreed to meet and, and help us out. He said he, he kind of knows everybody on the east side over there. And um, uh, he helped us get some of the endorsements and stuff. So 
um, we'll be we'll be in contact later this week. So maybe I can ask him to respond to you or something. Okay, sure. Yeah, that would be great. Um, I have a spreadsheet I'm trying to share here. I don't know. Are you guys seeing the spreadsheet? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, yeah. Um, this is the column where I received the reply. Um, so I can share this with you, Blaine, and um, you can kind of get an idea of who's replied and um, who we're waiting on. Okay, great. Do you have? Would you mind? Could you forward me your uh, your uh, message that you send out to them? Just a like a boilerplate or something. Not totally. Totally. I'll include something like that when I reach out to him after Tuesday. Yeah, it's it's really really similar to what we were sending out for candidates. So. Oh, great. Thanks. I'll do that. Okay. Um, oh, I was going to say, Sean, if you want to kind of brainstorm where you want to have that volunteer recruitment event, um, we can talk about it and I'll, you know, we'll post it in the volunteers group and promote it and I'll help organize that. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? No, I think we're good. Great, thank you. And um, we'll maybe we'll have another one in a in a couple weeks. Touch base and and see how everybody's done with the slideshow and if there's any edits that, you know. Oh, I did want to say that one of the questions that people have been getting quite often due to the national conversation mm -hmm. for all is, will this take away my private insurance? Um, I'm a union member, I have gold coverage, and the answer is no, that employers who offer better coverage than what whole Washington um, applies, they will not have to opt into the system. They won't, or they won't have to have the system if they offer better, the same or better coverage. So that should is that am i summarizing that right cindy yeah basically and aaron and i are are well we're over our heads right now we've gone from 50. um we're over our heads in looking at waiver language and we're looking at erisa and so erisa is a huge unknown because there's been nothing like this system i got this question too when i presented and basically i said well that's what I said. I said, we're kind of first in the water here, you know, our, it, and there's this big fat federal law that we can't change. Um, so, you know, our, our interpretation is that if, if your employer is offering um, the same or better coverage, that's fine. Um, they, if they're offering something less than they want to sign up or, or if they're offering something that doesn't, that it's an essential benefits package, but doesn't cover some of the stuff that that whole Washington covers, they can still enroll for that supplementary piece. Um, and so the answer is, you know, calm down. <laughs> um, but yeah, in terms of ERISA, we're almost certainly going to get a challenge. So we just need to know that's coming and be ready for it. Um. Hi, Cindy. Are you one of the people that helped write the bill? Yes. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, I have a, one question. Um, I didn't see any language in there about, uh, let's say a union uh, switches over to whole Washington healthcare. I didn't see any language guaranteeing that the employer contractors would have to negotiate the savings equitably towards the workers. You mean the employer's savings? Yeah. Oh, so, oh the, the, yeah, if, so if that, the employer yeah, can have a windfall yeah, that, and not share it. Yeah, that's all part that we can't touch 
the labor relations part of this equation. Um, so uh, we, they, it, they would have to, they'd have to look at how that affects their CBA, um, and that's and that's one of the reasons that ERISA is an issue, because mm -hmm. all of those benefits are subject to ERISA. Everything in the CBA is subject to ERISA, so they cannot, um, under ERISA, for other reasons, they can't they can't do that. Basically, I I go refresh myself. But it's even beyond healthcare. Um, they they've got to they've got to continue to provide the benefits that are required by ERISA um, and by the CBA unless both parties agree to amend something somewhere. Um, and they can't ever fall below the ERISA standards. So um, yeah, we uh, we did talk about that at one of our meetings. I can't even remember where we were. Um, George, I think we were at Marilyn's office when we talked about this. Do you remember that? Um, vaguely, when people say ERISA, usually like my eyes kind of glaze over. <laughs> yeah, so do everybody's. Um, but yeah, it's so there. There are all kinds of labor relations regulations that would prevent them, in theory, from doing that. Not that they might not try, but. You know that would be something that that the, that Washington State would have very little to say about, except to the extent that that Washington labor relations law might apply to that. So it's there are all kinds of fair bargaining provisions and right. I guess like one issues um, like that. You know, part of the pitch to unions is that. I'm, I'm part of a union, I'm, a, I'm IBEW, local 46 electrician, is that uh, um, like when we negotiate our like wages, right? We don't have to split that up right. between healthcare, our check and our pension. We can take that healthcare portion out, but you know, we pay 1500 um, a month for our insurance, not on our check, part of our benefit package, but I, the draw that I would think is that if we went to Washington, we'd be paying half or less that amount and that money that was going towards a very high premium could come back to us. But if that's not the case, then and that would be the idea. I mean, that would be our idea is that, you know, you can take some of those savings and use that, use that money for pensions or other types of benefits or salaries. Um, but that's, it's actually no different than if your employer, so, so your employer negotiates with healthcare plans all the time. It's really no different than your employer finding a cheaper contractor. Um, what happens to that money that they save? They find a find a cheaper plan, but they still make you pay the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, oh, right. There, there are, yeah, there are fundamental labor laws that um, is they're beyond the purview of of our initiative, but they're there for a reason, obviously. Mm -hmm. So you know. The, 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 you know, the first words out of my mouth, I mean, I'm not an employment lawyer, but the first words out of my mouth would be unfair labor practice. So, I like you it. know, that, that's, what I, that's where I think the protection would be. But again, I, you know, I, as a practical matter, um, I think that until we figure out what's going on with ERISA, uh, any employer that wants to just keep up their coverage is just going to do that. Okay. All right. Thank you. I probably have more questions later, and I appreciate you speaking to them. So thank you. Well, it's good to know that that's a question because we that's actually coming up in people's minds because we had kind of bounced that off the table as a theoretical thing, but it's good to know that people really are thinking about that. So um, Aaron and I can do some more looking. Hey, um, I just wanted to point out a tool that I've used in the past when I get questions. 
are, you know, if if I can like take a minute to send off a message to part of, you know, the whole Washington team, you know, a lot of times I can get an answer back, you know, via text or via Facebook Messenger in a matter of usually just a very few minutes. So, yeah. you know, that, that, that's a useful thing to just kind of do on the fly if you get something that is just stumping you. And a lot of people are really happy more often than not to have, you know, at least the effort shown, even if you don't get an answer back. So, and I will also say to that, um, I've gone to enough legislative district meetings with um, representatives from like such and such congressional office Right. Adam Smith or Pramila Diapol, and you'll ask them an in depth question, and they a lot of the time say, I don't know. <laughs> well, right. Back to you. So that's yep. totally legitimate. They're used to hearing that, you know, you can say, I'm a volunteer, or, you know, I I didn't write the initiative, I'm just a universal health care supporter, and I can, I, but I know who can answer that question. So, I'm, right. Uh, we'll get back to that one. Or, yeah, know, that's a great, that's a point you no, nobody is going to be able to answer every question it's true okay great okay. <laughs> like i said i'll have this recording up and um if you have any more questions feel free to um instant message okay okay so, thank you um, thank you so much for being part of this <laughs> thank you. yes thank you bye